The main question that you have to ask yourself is how do you learn? It's really disrespectful to your time and yourself if you're spending hours in class taking notes only to get mediocre grades. That's really bad. Some sort of personal style? That's really important because if everyone is spending 5 to 8 hours in class taking your typical notes, doing your research and your exam questions, then what makes you so different that you deserve exceptional grades? Hey guys, welcome back. Today's video is going to be slightly different in the sense I'm actually going to share about my studying technique that's highly requested. So for me personally, I wasn't really this study person because I didn't really study that much, but somehow I managed to get a 4.0 GPA, over $100,000 worth of scholarship, and also yesterday was invited by my dean to the high achievers program at law school. So I thought I want to reflect upon my studying experiences and share with you 20 study tips that help me achieve these exceptional grades and also actually having a life. We will be looking at some of the mindsets first before breaking down some of my key learning techniques. So let's get started. So let's start with tip number one, and that is active learning. This is by far the most important technique that I think everyone should know. Just think about this, most of us here are going to go to class, sit down in the lecture and listen to our tutors talk for hours and hours. And after that's completed, we'll go home and do readings and continue to work on exam questions. And then asking our tutors to mark and this process repeats. But if you really think about this, the main issue is that if everyone is doing the same thing, then why are you getting different results? This leads me to the need for active learning because if our mind is being shut down, i.e. if we are just focusing on what our tutors are saying instead of thinking about what we actually need, what we want to study, then we will just be guided by our tutors and no matter how much work we put, our grades are more likely going to be the mediocre side. So what active learning essentially entails is that you have to open up your mind, do the work because you want to do them, read the book because you want to read them instead of just having someone to to tell you what to do. And this leads me to tip number two, where you are responsible for the work that you produce. Not your tutors, not your friends, not your parents, not your family background. Yes, I know this will play a significant role in determining your grades as well, but ultimately we can't control a lot of these factors. What you can control is the kind of mindset that you have and also the kind of work that you put in the studying technique that you got into all this studying. This leads me back again to the idea that in a class, all the students get the same tutor, same resources, probably a similar amount of time they're studying. What is different is themselves, i.e. you. So I really need you to get some sort of individuality instead of just following the norm because that is the only varying factors and you are responsible for the work that you produce. And this leads me to study tip number three, which is don't be the secretary of your tutors. So let's start off by thinking about what the secretary do. The secretary is someone who types down notes, basically, for example, at the court, they type down the defendant's judgments and a lot of these kind of things that people say. And their role is basically to transcribe whatever conversation that has been done. And now let's think about this. You as a student, is your job taking down the notes of your tutors? Are you going to put this at the court's website or put down somewhere? Probably not. Your job is there to learn. And this leads me to one thing that I really couldn't understand in a lot of times is that people just keep taking down notes. Like when I go to classes, all I hear is some people just keep typing down notes and treat every single word of the lecturer like gold and that's not good. Not that I'm saying the lecturer's words are bad, but the idea is that by you typing down, you can't really process and actually think about what has been taught in class. So you need to focus your heart and soul on what's being said and not typing. Because most of this time, by you typing down, you're going to lose the essence of what is being taught in class. And also, guys, most of the times your tutors are going to put these slides on the website so you actually get to refer to them. If not, there will also be some sort of studying notes that you can refer to later on as well. There's no need to worry about typing down notes and being the secretary of your lecturer. 
And now this leads me to tip number four, which is to know what you are studying for. And by me talking about the purpose of studying, I'm literally referring to you studying for exams, i.e. you are studying for exams to get the best grades instead of you studying to perhaps no knowledge. Then you might be thinking, hmm? I thought I'm supposed to be studying for knowledge. Like, look, studying is fun. Like, what? Why are you saying that I should only be studying for exams? Yes, I get you. But there's one problem with school, which is that you kind of get stuck into this curriculum, i.e. you have to follow this curriculum for you to get the best marks. So for you to actually do well in exams and get the A grades, you need to spend a lot of your time focusing on what the school actually wants you. There is time for you to get those good grades, but there are also times for you to actually learn things. For example, for me, I actually like to do video editing, I like to do photography, I like music, but these are things that I don't learn in class. These are things that I Google, that I learn actually true experience. These are things that I learn outside of the classroom and I learn them for the purpose of learning. But for you in class, sometimes there will be a trade-off between learning for the purpose of learning and learning for grades. And if you want to get exceptional grades, you kind of have to go by the learning for grades pathway, which is not ideal, but it is what it is. Tip number five is to know that being a tutor is better than being a tutee. Now again, think about this situation. You might have a friend or two taking tutoring classes for the whole day and basically packing his entire schedule from day to night. And now, do you think he gets the best grades? Probably not, because he relies too much on his tutor. Recently, I got this personal trainer as well and I asked him, you know, I attend personal training like four times a week nowadays and I asked him this question, like, how are your best students like? Do they take a lot of classes? And surprisingly, he said, no, they take one to two classes a week. And the reason behind this is that when you actually figure out things yourself or when you actually tutor other people, that is going to be a better experience than you passively learning, which links all to the previous mindsets as well. Now let's move on to tip number six, which is to focus on ridiculous amount of quantity instead of quality. Now I know there is a huge debate between this quantity and quality. I want to explain to you why I think quantity matters more. So there was this experiment carried out a few years ago at university where there were two groups of students. One group of students were basically told to take photographs and they were judged based on the quality of one photograph at the semester, i.e. if you take a really beautiful photograph, you get A, if you take a mediocre photograph, you get B, etc. And for the other group of students, they are judged based on the number of photographs they've taken, i.e. if you take 100 photographs, you get A, if you take 80 photographs, you get B, etc. Down. And surprisingly, at the end of the day, the professors graded all all these photographs and choose some of the best photos and the best photos all came from the quantity group instead of the quality group. The reason behind this is that by you practicing over and over again, you actually got the chance to keep refining yourself and thinking about how I can improve instead of you just trying to perfect that one thing, which is why a lot of times today I'm able to do a lot of research essays and actually do them much better than a lot of my peers who actually spend like one month writing one 2000 word essay. And this is what we mean by practice makes perfect. Now let's move on to tip number seven, which is to have a big picture. You need to understand how your entire syllabus is being shaped. You need to understand that there are times where th certain concepts are important, certain concepts are not important, certain concepts maybe are just examples. Unfortunately, some people, some of my peers, what they do is they try to utilize every single hour of the time studying, i.e. when they sit down, they do not even have a plan at all, and they will just sit down and study there for five hours, and at the end of the day, nothing goes inside your brain, and that five hours is mainly wasted because they don't know how these things that they've just learned fit into the big picture. Whereas if you understand topic one, two, three, four, five, six, and then you see, okay, in the final exam, these topics are mainly tested and how they are tested, for example, are they in the form of a multiple choice question or are they in the essay? If they're essay, how are you going to structure? How can you take these examples that you just learned and put it under an argument that you can use for your essay? I think that is what we mean by understanding the big picture. And very nicely, this leads me to study tip number eight, which is to create a study plan. 
you need to know exactly what you are studying so that each of your hour that is being spent studying is not wasted. A lot of times people just study for the sake of studying, they studying for the sake of clocking the number of hours. But if you know exactly, for example, today I'm going to study chapter one, tomorrow I'm going to study chapter two, the day after I'm going to look at exam techniques and do a practice question, and by the end of 10 hours, for example, I will be able to get the entire syllabus out in a very efficient time. So creating a study plan actually really helps you to maximize your time and avoid unnecessary study. Now let's move on to study tip number nine and I think this is one of the more controversial ones which is to study everything by yourself first before you even attend classes. This is something that I actually found really helpful. You might be wondering, huh? how is this even possible? I don't even know what's the content. How can I study everything by myself? But actually, I tried this technique myself and there was one time when I was like, I just wanted to do some pre-reading. I read through the slides, I tried to understand what the concepts are and then I went to class. I was like, holy shit, that was a completely different experience. Because by me, the process of me reading through the slides actually helped me to understand way better. I understood and appreciated where the direction of the class is going, where this big picture fall in play and I actually have a very clear plan on how I could utilize this section of the notes that I just learned into my exam and by me going to classes after I've learned everything, I actually managed to further hone my understanding instead of me just sitting down there, being a person, typing down notes, waiting for time to pass and going home and mind wandering every single where. Now let's talk about tip number 10, which is to do mock exams. Mock exams are really important because at the end of the day, you are assessed based on your ability to write the exam paper instead of your ability to regurgitate the knowledge in its pure sense. You are not going to just get tested questions on what is page 150 of your textbook, how many hours you study. You are going to get tested based on your ability to understand the question. And by you doing mock exam questions way ahead, way in advance, a lot of quantity, you will be able to appreciate the kind of questions that come out in exam and you will be able to hone that skill in answering that techniques. A lot of my friends, again, unfortunately, what they do is they kind of study a lot of times, but they only look at the textbook, highlighting them, reading them, and only a very little proportion of time is actually spent doing. But I believe the best students have this philosophy where they learn by doing. So I hope you will be able to do and start some mock exams after this video as well. Now, let's talk about tip number 11, a little bit more controversial again, but something very useful, which is to mark your own work after you're done. So you do a lot of past exam papers now that you're done, especially for essays, okay? You'll be like, hmm, I need to ask my tutors to mark it. We're not talking about MCQ, but we're really talking about essays over here. And 30 mark essay, 40 mark essay, where your tutors take two to four weeks to get back to you. It's really frustrating to wait for tutors to, to take their own time, but also it's really helpful for you if you actually mark your own work. You will see some sort of marking rubrics where there are some sort of suggested ideas, suggested pointers where, where your essay, where, your, where, where certain sort of writing might stand in a certain sort of scenario. Sit down, put the marking back guide beside you, actually start marking and, and give yourself a mark. It, it might not be accurate, it might, it might be the worst sort of marking, but that's fine. By the process of you engaging in self-reflection and self-marking, you will learn so much things that you actually cannot imagine. And that's something that a lot of my other friends don't do as well. They write the work, they put in the hard work, 20 hours went into writing like a few pieces of essay, and they put the essay aside wait for four weeks before the tutor get back, and in the four weeks they learn nothing. Whereas for me, I literally can just do one essay, put the answer key beside me, and mark it, and get feedback on the spot. Tip number 12 is to do things early. There is actually no reason for you to leave it to the last minute. If you can learn things five days ahead before the deadline, can learn it two weeks ahead before the deadline, why do you want to leave it to the last minute? Why do you want to leave it to the day before your exam begins? The only thing you're going to give yourself is unnecessary stress and nothing goes into your brain. And to be honest, it doesn't even work most of the time as well. So do things early and don't leave things to the last minute. 
Tip number 13 is to actually focus on your weakness. This is especially true when you do academia, right? When you do sort of research paper. It might not be true in real life. In, the, in real life, you want to focus on your strength and actually, you know, improve your strength. If I'm really good at making videos, for example, I want to make a lot of videos and actually capitalize on that. I don't want to be good at everything. But for exam, you have to be good at everything. Because for example, if I have three chapters to test, chapter one is 20 marks, chapter two is 20 marks, and chapter three is 20 marks. I'm very good at chapter one, chapter two, but I'm very bad at chapter Chapter 3. If I spend more time studying chapter 1 and chapter 2, you're only going to get closer towards like 18, 19 marks where diminishing marginal returns come in play. The more you study, you use less results. But whereas if you're getting like 5 out of 24 chapter 3 and you just study like 20 minutes more per day, you're going to shoot your marks up to 12 marks and you're going to get way more results than you studying chapter 1 or chapter 2. So focus on weakness for maximum results. And this leads me to tip number 14, which is to read other people's work. This is where collaboration comes in play and it's really important because a lot of times we are just into our own world, we are just into this idea where we are the best students and uh, we don't know, we don't make any references. But then if you look at say people who get high distinctions, who get 4.0 GPAs, who get really really good grades and you study how they work, study their writing style, study their structure, study the kind of words that they use and you actually start to improve by you reading them. That's the same thing for me say for example when I, I start making videos as well because I just keep looking at people and I, I try to imitate their styles I slowly get better and same thing for academics as well I've actually never taken tutoring in my life I just I just literally do by reading other people's work and trying to get inspired by them so try reading other people's work as well model essays and see how your grades might change all right, now tip number 15, which is to leverage on AI, artificial intelligence. This is one of the things that is by far the most useful for me. Like once ChatGPT 4.0 came out, I just keep subscribing it all the time, no matter how much it costs, because it's like a personal assistant to me. Like I could literally ask to do any questions, generate for me summaries of exam questions, generate for me summary of study notes. Sometimes I ask it to write my work as well, helping me to structure and helping me to get the kind of ideas. One of the biggest thing I hate about school is that they kind of prohibit you from using artificial intelligence at times, i.e. they say it's not allowed for you to use AI. But we live in a world where technology is evolving so fast and AI's intelligence is way ahead of human. Like once I started using it, my productivity just skyrockets. Sometimes your tutors might be these old people like they, they just start to this old fashioned mindset that you have to do things by the old traditional way. They don't even try out AI. But if you actually go and try and explore AI, you will realize that your productivity will be benefited by ways that you never imagined before. Now let's move on to tip number 16, which is to have a workspace. Environment is so important because if you have the right environment, your productivity will skyrocket in things that you never imagined before. Just think about this, consider two countries, a country where there is very little access to technology versus a country where there is technology, like say a very developed country, UK, US, Australia, Singapore, these kind of countries, you'll be able to do, you'll be able to actually study. Same thing, if you have a proper desk, you have a proper monitor, you have no distractions, you have no phone beside you, your phone is on do not disturb mode, and you know that this place is where you sit down and actually do work, this is the place where you sit down and study, this is the place where you sit down and film videos, this is the place where you sit down and sleep, you will be able to actually put your mind into this focus mode and your productivity will be much better than if you do everything in the same place. I know for some of you, you might not be able to afford this idea where you have a study room and then you have a bedroom, you have a living room. It's okay. I'm like this as well. My bed is literally beside me. But I know whenever I'm on this chair, I will be doing productive things like studying film videos whereas that other side of my room will be for sleeping and social media and sort of this kind of other low productivity things so have a proper workspace even if you are limited by space Tip number 17 is actually to study a lot of things in a short period of time because this again forces you to get first of all that quantity also when you have to study a lot of things in a short period of time you actually force your mind to be in this very productive state for example if I have like two units to study for I will only give myself one hour to study and, and I could do other things after that so what I do is I literally sit down I know exactly I only have one hour so I went to the summary page I understood the main concepts I zoom into the details I look at what are some of the key topics under this and I zoom into the examples, put it down into a mind map, and I, I'm done in half an hour, I will look at another question. So this reminds me again to another video that I've also made, which is why cramming is the best technique. Now, by me saying why cramming is the best technique, I'm not saying that you should do things last minute, that's not good. But 
when I say cramming, I'm literally referring to you putting a lot of things and study them in a short period of time. So if you're interested in that video as well, do check that out after the end of this video as well. Tip number 18 is to do self-reflection. So in self-reflection, you have to think about things that you've done over the past year, what's working, what's not working, what kind of studying technique actually gets you A, and what kind of studying technique actually gets you B. If you think your current studying technique works well for you, and you've been employing that for the past year, maybe two years, five years, and you've not been getting that kind of grades, throw away the study technique and focus on something new because you've given yourself enough time to fall in that trap of that studying technique. If you've been taking notes, you've been sold to the lies of studying very hard, taking down notes actively, being the tutor secretary, doing homework when you get home, continue to do pre-readings for school, and you've not been getting the kind of results that you want. Throw that away, try out new studying technique. It could be my technique, it could be someone else's technique, but you have to reflect on yourself what's working, what's not working. Because if you are just repeating things that don't work, you are not going to go anywhere. So doing self-reflection is very important as well. And now this leads me to tip number 19, which is to have time to unwind and relax. We all know that we need to have a good balance in life. You can't just be a studying machine and there's no point in being a studying machine as well. Just think about those students or those friends beside you who just proclaim that they study every day for like 24 hours a day. Are their grades good? No. So don't be like them, don't be like this person, don't be like your friend who just studies like 24 hours a day. Because first of all, they won't get the grades they desire, but second of all, it's also not good for your mental health. So when it's time, go out for a drink, go out for a party on Friday nights, do whatever you want. For me, it's editing videos, listening to some music, going out for a hike. Whatever you do, take time to relax and unwind. And finally, we got the last tip, which is to understand that studying and life can actually be so good because there are so many people out there in developing countries where they don't even get access to studying. The moment where they are born, they are just thinking about how to survive, how to get the food for the next day, how to get a drink for the next day. And you and us, we are sitting down here thinking about how to actually study and get better grades and improve our results. So you kind of have to understand that life can actually be so good because you're actually so fortunate to be put in this position where you actually get to study. So actually there's little need to worry and stress about your circumstances, worry about what if I fail the next exam. Because nothing is the end of the world when we compare ourselves to other people who are from developing countries who are already in a much better position. So appreciate these opportunities, appreciate the chance of you learning knowledge, and I hope you can enjoy these processes. So guys, that's it. These are the 20 tips that helped me achieve exceptional grades in school. And I hope you guys found it helpful. Feel free to take some of these tips and apply them the next time you're studying. And let me know if you guys enjoyed this kind of video because it was really long for me to record these videos. And it's pretty much by far the longest video on my channel. But I hope it really brings in a lot of value because I know a lot of you out there were wondering about my studying technique. And now here you go, you got it. So let me know in the comments and I will look forward to having a chat with you guys again in the next video. Bye bye.